Hello, welcome to my channel Physics for Students. My name is Shaunak and I make videos on physics and mathematics. First of all, let me thank all the subscribers who have immensely contributed to this channel. Physics for Students this September completed one year of its journey and in this one year I have received great many feedbacks, uh, I would say constructive criticism which really motivated me to make this channel grow. I have made this website which is physicsforstudents.com. You can go there, you can visit. Apart from my YouTube videos, I have been contacting researchers who are sending articles, scientific writings and I myself am writing few interesting blogs and articles and reflections on Kurt Gödel etc. So you can also contribute to this website by sending your articles and writings. Well, first of all, let me tell you what this today's video is all about. Today's video is about tensor. Now, I have been receiving lot many feedback uh, from different uh, subscribers, students asking me to make uh, some videos on tensor. However, I have already made a, a considerable amount of videos on tensor. You can go to my channel and select on tensor analysis playlist and you can find a certain good videos on tensor. These videos are basically uh, for the building blocks, I would say, clear up the concepts of tensor, let you know what these things are and uh, the, uh, how tensors are being formed, covariant, contravariant, backward transformation, forward transformation, all those things. However, these are much more technical details which you can later check it out and go video by video. This particular video which I am making is more or less how do you understand tensor, what is a tensor, how do you learn tensor and what are the essential books and uh, I would say video materials that you need to know in order to learn tensor. So you can say that this is a kind of a guideline for tensors. So before I go ahead and explain you what tensor is all about, let me go back a little bit back into the history and let us find out that who was the person who first found the term tensor, under what context and what actually is the word tensor. I mean to say, why do we call it tensor? Why don't we call it something like uh, anything else? Anything else, we can call it uh, X, Y or Z, but why do we call it tensor? So as far as the history goes back, uh, the, uh, an Irish mathematician by the name of William Rowan Hamilton, he was the first person, he lived around 1860 to 1805 to 1865, if I'm not wrong, you can check it out. William Rowan Hamilton was basically an Irish mathematician and he was working with uh, the Irish Trinity College at Dublin and he was the first person to coin the term tensor, William Rowan Hamilton. Uh, he is not only, he didn't not only coined the term tensor, but he also coined the term called cross product and dot product yeah so his main significance apart from mathematics has been coining the term tensor as well as coining the terms what is a dot product and what is a cross product now as far as history goes further once this term has been coined and we started learning and reading more about tensor there was another person by the name of Voldemar White I repeat his name is Voldemar White at around 1898 he used stem tensor on the physical properties, on the basis of physical properties, because he was doing some study and research on crystals. And we will see why crystals are important in terms of tensor analysis. So, Voldemar Voigt, around 1898, first, coined, uh, first used tensor after William Rowan Hamilton coined the term tensor. Now, if you see, uh, uh, you know, uh, Voigt's contribution in terms of tensor in order to represent physically was that crystals. Now, if you see the basic characteristics of crystal as a whole, crystals are not uh, isotropic, right? Crystals are always anisotropic. Now, when I say anisotropic, I try to mean that, for example, if we take J, okay as the current density and e as the electric current so what will happen is that in case of crystals if i take the current density it won't be the same it would be something like this which you can already see looks something like a matrix formation and something like a tensor right 
So what happens is that when we are talking of crystal as an anisotropic element, so the J, when the current density flows in, the J part, it is not always the same. It takes the components of X and Y and Z, Z and you know, it, it actually uh, changes in terms of different direction. So the current density, once we uh, take into the crystal as an anisotropic element, when it flows into the electric line, it, to say it is not in the direction of E as an electric current. It takes X, Y and Z and hence it takes the formation of a tensor. Right. So William Rowan, uh, sorry, Voldemort Voigt was the first person who used tensor uh, into the physical properties while, you know, uh, doing some research on crystals. After that, we will uh, find that history says about Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was obviously the prince of mathematics. And then we come to Levi Civita, Tullio Levi Civita. If you go to my, uh, you know, playlist in, on what is called the architects of general theory of relativity, I have laid down chronologically how the formation of tensor is done. Remember one thing that Einstein was not aware about the fact of tensor. I mean to say Einstein was not aware that he will be using tensor further in general theory of relativity. So it was Tullio Levi Civita, then Gregorio Ricci Corbastro, then Marcel Grossman, then his friend uh, Michel Besso. All of them actually uh, founded or rather uh, I would say mentored uh, Einstein to use uh, tensor in his general theory of relativity. Uh, there is a wonderful book if you can go you will find there is a book called uh, Einstein's Italian Connection something like that you can just check it out there Einstein Italian Connection and uh, Gregorio Ricci Curbastro and Tullio Levi Civita although uh, Levi Civita, uh, Tullio Levi Civita is known most for his Levi Civita Connection which is a different topic so uh, they actually uh, uh, through uh, history the uh, terms actually uh, got better and, uh, and the mathematicians and we started using tensor. Tensor actually was independently developed by uh, other mathematicians, nothing related to Einstein, nothing related to even general theory of relativity until these mentors taught Einstein to use uh, uh, tensor into relativity. Right, so Levi Civita, Gregorio Ricci Curbastro, even prior to that, Voldemort Voigt, and even prior to that, uh, William Rowan Hamilton, they actually founded the concept of uh, tensor, and then it has been later used into mathematics, as we see in relativity. Now, once we had, uh, we know a little bit about the background and the history of tensor, what, why do we uh, coin the term tensor? If you go a little bit into the history of tensor, the Latin term, Tensor is a kind of a thigh muscle. I remember those days around about seven, eight years back when I was playing soccer. I got a you know um, you know a muscle pull, and the doctor told me that your tensor muscles have been strained. Right. So when I talk of tensor muscle, uh, muscle, what I'm trying to tell you is that the, this word basically tensor uh, or tender, uh, which actually you know uh, represents rigidity. Okay, stretching, some comes of a some kind of a pulling kind of a sense. So that is actually uh, why we coin uh, coin the term tensor. So tensor, tensor muscle, or in some literary sense, you can say it is uh, some know, kind of a stretching rigidity or uh, bending some those kind of a thing so that is why we call tensor so ten, uh, uh, so uh, any 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 particular material which we are trying to pull or stretch or you know uh, bend things apart so that is why from the latin term tensor we call tensor analysis or tensor calculus so it has something to do with stretching and uh, pulling forward and uh, you know that kind of a rigidity so this is what is uh, the term tensor and why tensor came into and uh, the uh, 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 Voldemort Void first used tensor in crystals. So that is basically uh, the background of the tensor part. Now when we come to the definition of a tensor, uh, the textbooks and internet is flooded by uh, you know, definitions. We can call it as a mathematical ent entity which is invariant under uh, transformations. We can call it as a multilinear map. We can call it as a kind of a mathematical object which changes 
with the transformation uh, with the change of uh, uh, you know coordinates but sometimes it uh, but they, but, but there will be a certain specific rules we can call it even a n uh, say for example a nth rank ten tensor in an n dimensional uh, uh, space that lies with n indices as n to the power n components we can call it as a set of comp components obeying certain transformational rules to the basis of vectors all those things so I mean to say, in general, what we call tensor, if you go to my video of metric tensor, I have explained in various phases of that video what uh, tensor is all about. Let us understand for this particular video is a some kind of a mathematical object which obeys certain transformation rules, certain specific transformational rules. And when we change the coordinates, uh, they also change some kinds remains invariant and they follow a certain kind of a rule. So now, if, if, if I, I don't want to go into the technical details of, um, uh, you know, uh, tensor, you can also call it, as I've written here, it is a multilinear map or it obeys, uh, uh, obeying certain rules under transformation. Let me give you a very basic idea of tensor. So those who are beginners might find it that, okay, so this is a kind of a very basic or an intuitive approach, which I generally don't try to give. For example, this is a table. Okay, not necessarily that this table has to be what I will call flat. Let us say any 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 kind of a table. Okay, and it has got table cloth uh, spread all, all over the table so that it it, it actually uh, you know uh, comes around the edges. It is a little bit more than the size of the table. And we put a coffee cup. Although this is a pen, I'm so sorry. So we can put up a coffee cup, right? Something like this. So we put a coffee cup on the table. Right, which has got a nice piece of a tablecloth, and not necessarily it has to be a, a what I would say um, a, a flat table. Now, once uh, just visualize this. Now, once this table and the tablecloth is put up, the the the, the coffee there is a coffee inside the cup, right? And it has got a certain temperature, right? Ideal temperature, which is not going to change. For example, now what happens if I move this cup round about here and there? Okay, so what happens is that does the coffee or the coffee cup or anything changes? No. Now say for example the same coffee cup when I got this uh, tablecloth, I pulled the tablecloth around here and there. Right. What happens to the coffee or to the coffee cup or to the temperature? It doesn't change, right? I can rotate even the tablecloth around the table or I can rotate even the table around here and there. What happens to the coffee cup? It doesn't. It doesn't change. Obviously, the coffee temperature is an ideal temperature. So this is actually the basic essence of a tensor. So if I put an object, I'm not going into vector or vector basis or something like that. If I put an object over there and if I make certain changes around the object, uh, for example, with the analogy with the pulling of the table, uh, tablecloth or moving the uh, uh, coffee cup, etc., it is not going to change. It is not going to change. It is going to stay invariant and it obeys certain rules. So this is actually what I call about the basic essence of a tensor. We will come to the later part or you can go into the mathematical part into my video. I'm just trying to give you a basic idea of what is a tensor. It doesn't change with the change of the uh, coffee cup. If I'm pulling or rotating things around, it remains the same. So this is one, uh, I would say, a basic idea in which uh, you can understand what is. Another important aspect of tensor is that, this is one uh, kind of an understanding. Another important aspect of tensor is that we all know what are the components of a vector are, right? So for example, for a, uh, I would say X and Y are a two dimension, we have the X component and then we have, we have got the Y component. And then for example, for X, Y and Z, we have got uh, X component and Y component and Z component. So we know what is the component of a vector. Now, for example, I am an observer, you are an observer, okay? I have my coordinates as x, y, and z, okay? So I put it as x, y, and z. Now, there is another observer, say, for example, you or anybody else, O2, observer 2, and he has the coordinates, say, x prime, y prime, and z prime, okay? So I have got x, y, and z, and uh, the other observer, observer O2, has got x prime, y prime, and z prime. So what I do is that I write down the magnitude of the vector, whatever be the vector, v or whatever, in, the, in terms of x, y and z 
and the other observer O2 rides the same vector V which is moving in whatever be the direction in X prime Y prime and Z prime so what is happening is that we uh, both of us are using the different components but we are using the same vector now you might say uh, what I am uh, telling it about. No, uh, what I am laying out is that there are certain principles of certain important things which you need to know before we move on to the tensor part. So I write the same component, uh, so, uh, sorry, I, I write the, uh, uh, measure the vector in x, y, z. The other observer measures the x, um, uh, vector in x prime, y prime and z prime. So we are using the different components but we are using the same vector. Now say for example, I from my, uh, 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 what I would say, frame of reference or coordinates x, y and z, I try to measure the uh, components of observer 2 which is in x prime, y prime and, prime and z prime. Right, x prime and y prime and z prime. So if I know what are the components that that O2 observer in another coordinate system have measured, I can use transformation and rules in order to write the components of that observer O2 into my uh, coordinate system which is x, y and z. So I would again repeat, we can write down and convert them to my coordinate x, y and z if we know the components of x prime, y prime and z prime. So if in case that I, if I'm measuring velocity or anything, say for example, at 1.01, .01, and if the other observer is measuring, it is in X prime, Y prime and Z prime. So for 0, 01, the velocity or the value might, uh, you know, uh, change into one upon root two, minus one upon root two, or say one upon root two, whatever. Right, so that means the, the concept of transformation comes into play when if I know how the vectors or the components of the vector in uh, that particular frame of reference changes with the, uh, if I know uh, how it is changing and I can use the transformation to do it in my frame of reference x, y and z. So now the most important thing is that what we got is that tensors like vectors they also have a magnitude and a direction but they are potentially higher in order okay so i repeat tensors just like vectors have a magnitude and direction but potentially higher in order now i will come to what i mean by order say for example if i got a n n tensor for example that means it has got n number of direction if I got a scalar, say for example, that is a zero order tensor. If I get a vector, it is a, uh, for example, a first order tensor. If I get, get a stress, it is a, uh, you know, second order tensor, third, fourth and so on. Right. So what I'm trying to tell is that now, now let me come to, uh, you might uh, come to the point that what is an order or the rank of a tensor. I mean to say these are directions. We, it is important, I will tell you why directions are important because once we move into higher level of physics, say for example, general theory of relativity, etc., which deals with three or four dimensions and even if we can go higher up, so that in that case, if the tensor is there, then we need to find out the direction. So for example, if you need one direction, we got a, uh, so say for example, first order, we got one, uh, that is for one direction. So we got, need a, a tensor for the second order, we got a second order. We need a third, we go a third. We got fourth, five, six, seven, and so on, and we get up to n. So, so order is actually signifying what is called the direction, this or this or either way. So whatever the point that we really need to do in case of a tensor or uh, physical uh, measurements, if we need more direction, the tensor would grow into more. Now we will actually come to the other part, I mean to say vectors and tensor a little bit later. But here, this is the right time when we need to tell you that uh, we already know that scalar, uh, it has got magnitude, but it is not no direction. Vector, which has got both magnitude and direction. But the point is that what has got to do with tensor? So tensor has got both magnitude as well as direction and another thing which is called the plane. That is, if uh, say for example, is this be the plane and if there is a force like this which is acting on it, then we need to know on which plane it is acting. I will tell you the significance. So just understand for the right now, for the time being, that tensors, uh, apart from vectors, would have a magnitude, it would also have a direction and it will also have the plane on which the force or the physical thing is happening. Okay, now coming to the uh, uh, next part of our video, 
uh, you might ask me or the students often really fear oh tensor tensor without tension you know you will find this kind of funny uh, topics out here my point is that uh, is tensor difficult so that would be the uh, you know next point and i've really made a note to tell you that absolutely not tensors are not at all difficult why i will tell you the basic reason see whenever with the uh, i what i would say with the with, with the uh, with the change of time and with the passage of history as mathematics and physics evolve we always try to make things which are easier to understand okay now say for example tensor why it has been made because at some point of time the mathematicians found that things are not going okay with the current vector or the current tools that we have so why would tensor be difficult tensor has been made in order to make your life easy for example einstein summation convention so we remove the sigma sign in order to assume that okay we don't need to write the sigma at every point of time come on because we need to ease things out we are trying to make things easy so how can tensor be uh, you know difficult say for example if i take this one the ricci tensor so what is the ricci tensor ricci tensor is basically contraction of the first and third indices of the riemann curvature tensor now why we have contracted the first and third indices of riemann curvature tensor obviously there is a reason that means we are trying to shorten things up you imagine those days when we used to have those big you know computers super uh, main frame and huge computers those desktop now it is coming slow and it is coming a little bit lesser lesser and shorter mobile phones which used to be huge now has become this much small mobile phones everything every applications of physics and mathematics which grows with time always try to shrink so tensor contraction uh, this is i am not going to say about that a tensor contraction is again an important thing why because tensor contraction is trying to make things lesser yeah but one thing is important is that why most of the people uh, students find tensor to be difficult the reason is that tensors the indices we call the downs of the indices sometimes going up down contra co mixed etc these are something new right these are something new that means you need to uh, you know a little bit go through in order to understand but tensors are not difficult would it have been so difficult it would have been vanished from the face of physics it would have been erased from the history of mathematics so just take it a note that tensors are not difficult tensors are made to make life easy and tensors are made in order to contract shorten long equations writing into small so how can tensors be different difficult definitely tensors are quite easy just keep the eyes growing and your uh, keep on practicing you will be able to learn the tensors if you are a little bit mathematically bent then we you can understand tensor in this way also for example if i take three coordinates for example x y and z and put around v for example let us take any uh, any uh, any value say 3 5 and 7 okay so what we can do is that we can write v in this way we can write 2x uh, sorry 3x so 3 5 and 7 so we take it as 3x plus 5y plus 7z so each coordinate is associated with a uh, a corresponding unit basis vector so each coordinate is associated with a unit basis vector if i take this x y and z I'm so sorry. I'm moving my hand because I have a habit of writing it on the blackboard. So if I take it as x, y, and z, how can we make different combinations? So we get this one: x, 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 y, x, z. Okay, y, x, y, 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 z, z, x, z, y, z, z. So what it forms is actually a tensor of order two, and it has got nine components. Again, this is a very intuitive and uh, I would say a very basic kind of an approach to make you tensor. So if I get x, y, and z, and I can combine them into all those nine components, and this is called the uh, rank of or, uh, tensor of order two. In this way, we can take further, say for example, x, 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 or a, 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 whatever, and we can make into an order three tensor, which has got twenty-seven components. So order four, order five, and so on. So each of this. uh indices are actually denoting directions and the order goes up because we need more directions you can refer to my video because uh, uh, if i if i show you this 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 one this uh, this cube is actually what is called a stress tensor this is not the right video to tell more about stress tensor there are more things to be told but stress tensor or the cauchy stress tensor you can see that each of this uh, you know 
planes, I would say, this one and this one and that part. Uh, on those things, actually, the stress is happening. Now, let me, uh, you know, uh, give you an example. Say, for example, if we are concerned with a little bit of a particle, the net force which is happening on that particular particle, that is quite easy to compute. But uh, say, for example, we can take a steel beam, okay? And in the steel beam, each and every point, you can see there are different kind of infinite amount of stresses which are happening over there. Infinite amount of stresses. So in that case, there are uh, there would be infinite amount of calculations which will be involved. So in case of a beam where there is not a net force involved, but a series of stresses which are happening, what we do is that we need a tensor. I will come to the part when you will understand why do we need a uh, tensor. So if we go back from uh, this example and we take V equals to A, B and C. So what we can do is that we can construct V equals to AX plus BY plus CZ, right? We can construct that once we have taken 3x plus 5y plus 7z. Now we are making it as v is equal to ax plus uh, by plus cz. Now if I take this v is equal to ax plus by plus cz and I can transform. Okay. This particular equation I am transforming to another reference frame which is called x prime, y prime and z prime. Okay. So what is going to happen that we are going to get a new set of rules into the new transformed coordinates. That is exactly what a tensor does. So let me read it out from here. Just as components of a vector change with the change of a vector space, just as the components of a vector changes with the change of vector space, the components of a tensor also changes. The components of a tensor also changes, obviously, but there would be certain set of rules. So this, when they change it according to the rule of mat matrix, we call it as a covariant tensor. When it uh, changes in the opposite direction, you can call it as a contravariant tensor. When it both changes in co and contra, we call it a mixed tensor. All those things are later. You can find it out uh, much more detailed in my video where I have actually shown what is a co and a contravariant uh, uh, transfer, co, co and contravariant tensor. You can even go to my video in metric sensor and you can find out how co and contra is worked upon. Don't get confused with the indices part. You will be come. To, you will come to use. That is not much of an issue. So you put an index. Generally, what happens is the basis is written at the bottom. Right, and the co part is written uh, right at the below of the tensor T. I write alpha or nu right at the bottom of the co. Contra moves up. It is a kind of a convention. So you see in matrix what we do when it is an inverse matrix, we put it M uh, minus one for a transpose kind of a thing. So we do it in the same way. So co and contravariant vectors, all those things, they actually come along. So you don't need to worry about the indices part, but try to understand what, what I told you is that from one frame of reference, when I'm taking those things, I'm generalizing V as AX plus VY plus CZ, and I'm taking the same and transforming to X prime, Y prime, and Z prime, right? That transformation happens, and that transformation happens with a definite set of rules. And that is what is the rules of the tensor, right? So this is again what I, so more or less, this is what I need to tell you. As I told you earlier that I'm making X, Y, and Z, I'm measuring it in one direction. Another person who measures X prime, Y prime, Z prime, maybe for the X, uh, sorry, for the Y axis, uh, instead of uh, putting it north, he puts a little bit on the northeast. Instead of the x-axis, which is on this way, he puts a tilts it around this. So obviously the measurement of the components changes and accordingly we find the tensor. All these things, what I'm ch telling that these changes, it increases, it stretches, all these things are explained in my video. So if you really want to get a much more detailed analysis, of the uh, vector, uh, sorry, the tensor part, look into my videos. That will give you a much clearer idea. Now you might ask me, as I was telling you, that what is the difference between a vector and a tensor? Instead of telling what is the difference, let me tell you what is the relation between vectors and tensor. First one we call vector is a tensor of rank 1. This is an ideal kind of an example, I would say relation. Vector is a tensor of rank 1. Tensor is also a part, uh, kind of a particular vector. So, you know, if I tell, say, for example, uh, uh, let me tell you in this way, point, a point is zero dimensional mathematical object. Line is a one dimensional mathematical object. Uh, uh, you know, plane is higher dimensional mathematical object. 
volume is three dimensional kind of a mathematical object so what is happening is that then from volume we can go that we can tell plane is this dimensional object and uh, 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 say for example line is this dimensional object and line and point is this dimensional object so what is happening these are all tensors so for, we can tell of line zero uh, sorry point zero then line then plane then volume so zero one two three so these are all tensors of different ranks because we need more directions right we need more direction so first is that vector is a tensor of rank one second is that tensor is a definitely a special or a particular kind of a vector physical quantities varying in different directions are being measured in tensor when it is varying now vectors or uh, vectors generally allow vector rule. this is important now vectors will allow vector rules if you have seen this uh, tip to tail this kind of additions which are being done but tensors do not okay vectors follow a certain kind of a specific additional rules tensors do not tensor uh, vectors have got, uh, got magnitude and direction but in case of a tensor it has got magnitude direction and the plane as I told you when we are measuring a stress on a particular cube we need to associate which plane it is happening and based on that plane we got XYZ next plane XYZ so this is important that tensors deal with vector and magnitude and with a definite plane now I come to the final concluding two points is that why do we need a tensor right we are dealing with tensors and cracking our brains and solving mathematical problems so the first point is transformation so now you understand why general theory of relativity is intensely related to tensors because from special once we moved into general from initial frame of reference to non-initial frame of reference everything is changing everything is being getting transformed so transformation is one rule key rule and when once the transformation happens we need to know what are the rules so we need a tensor Number two, engineering. Engineering, uh, stress, strain, shear stress, everything. The measurement of the stress on a particular plane, crystal, uh, steel, beams, etc. We all need tensor. Uh, I already told about this uh, stress part. General theory of relativity is obviously related. Non-Euclidean geometry, which relates with manifolds, right? And, uh, you know, geodesics. Say, for example, if I say an electron moving around the path, fine it has got a specific path we can measure give it a charge give it a charge and it takes a different manifold it takes a different part how do you are going to measure it is uh, it is not a strict definition anyway you are going to measure it through tensors so manifolds geodesics now three things are important although the video is getting quite long so one is that inertia tensor now when when we got a four force right or a four vector we measure inertia tensor uh, inertia in terms of a tensor how do we do that inertia tensor we know that it is a sum of certain bodies acting on a force and when we take that sum and we put it in a nice matrix if you go to inertia tensor uh, and you just learn it you will see that it takes a form of a matrix obviously a matrix from vector you move into matrix and you get the tensor so in inertia tensor and the most important thing is that electromagnetic field tensor you might ask me a question can James Clerk Maxwell's equations be written in a tensor form yes it can be written in a tensor form so the four current and the four vector I told you for the case of a uh, uh, for the uh, uh, this one inertia tensor for a four current also uh, when it uh, moves into special theory of relativity actually uses the first time the four current and the electromagnetic field tensor came into the picture so electromagnetism changes the entire scenario into a four current and it becomes a electromagnetic field tensor so now you know what are the what is the what why do we need the uh, tensor obviously we are not crazy that we are just uh, talking and learning so much why do we need tensor transformations engineering purpose stress general theory of relativity which deals with the coordinate transformation non-euclidean geometry which deals with manifolds geodesics etc inertia tensor electromagnetic tensor metric tensor and Riemann curvature tensor which is not the subject of this video anyway these are just actually the need for tensor I will come to the final part which is the books part uh, which are okay before I coming to the books part let me tell you what are the prerequisites of a uh, tensor uh, what do you need to know first of all multivariable calculus as I told earlier in general theory of relativity that you need to have a complete understanding of uh, multivariable calculus number one second an absolute grade grasp over linear algebra 
I've already shown in my video what are the books that you need to do for linear algebra. You can go through that. Vectors, obviously. Vectors without vectors. The next part of vectors come with tensors. And a little bit of Laplacian and your curl and divergence. And if you know a little bit of differential geometry. But the key would be one, partial differential equation, multivariable calculus. Second would be linear algebra. Third would be vectors. A little bit of differential geometry. Fine. Let me come to the book part. Uh, uh, part. I won't let you know a lot of books. Number one would be this. Okay, Dan Fleisch, The Student's Guide to Vectors and Tensor. This is an absolute Bible. I told you earlier, if you are not okay kind of a thing with the vectors, you can consult this book because uh, uh, Professor Fleisch first teaches you the vectors and tensors. It has got an absolute great understanding of vectors and tensors and you can go up to Riemann curvature tensor step by step approach. My next recommendation of the book would be this one. GE Hayes Vector and Tensor Analysis. Now, if I if, if you see this book has got a unique feature. One is that it will start with the basics, vectors. Then it will take you to the I've got the entire list. I gotta show you because this is on my tab. So vectors are there, then it goes into vector operations so that you learn the operation addition, etc. Then it goes into analytic geometry, then it goes to application of vectors in general physics, and then finally it goes into tensor analysis. So it is an absolute great book. It takes step-by-step -step approach. Don't worry about anything. It will teach you, Professor Hay will teach you, and that is the best self-learning book. That is number two. Number three would be this one, which I showed you earlier in the general relativity theory uh, video, Principles of Calculus by Taha Sochi, right? If you don't have the book, let me know, write to me at my email ID. I think that I can give you a soft copy of the book. This book, Taha Sochi's book has one feature. It doesn't deal with vectors. Okay, so if you want to make the vector part solid and then go into tensor, look into GEA Hayes book or uh, Professor Fleisch, Daniel, Dan Fleisch book. This is directly related with tensors. It starts first with spaces, general spaces. Then it will take into tensors. It will go into tensor operations. Then it will go to certain special tensors. Then it will come to tensor differentiation and ultimately with the differential operator. Okay, differential operator in Taha Sochi's book is absolutely great. It takes all the coordinates and it uh, deals, uh, deals you with the differential operator, how it happens. Coming to the uh, uh, one, two, three, uh, there's a fourth book. <laughs> the fourth book would be this one, which I, is on your screen. Sean's Outline for Tensor Calculus. Absolutely great book. More than I think 100 problems solved. And until you solve the problems, you won't be able to learn that. Right. So Sean's Outline for Tensor Calculus. Last, which I again uh, mentioned in gener general relativity's video, would be this one. Manifold Tensors and Forms by Paul Rentland. This is an absolutely great book. Just go through it. It will give you a thorough, complete understanding of tensors. Well, so <laughs> I think that's it. So uh, let me just summarize the most important key points of tensors. First, you need to learn about the basics of multivariable calculus, about linear algebra, which is most. Consult Gilbert Strang's book, then go into uh, vectors complete vector understanding operations etc and a little, little bit about curl divergence and Laplacian. In, uh, I, I told you about the basics of tensor who founded it and what is the one thing it just went off my mind that if you're really concerned to know that how crystals are related to tensor what you can do is that you can uh, I, I just forgot the name Michael Van Bezian I am think uh, would be that the right person Michael Van Bezians, there is a, a you know kind of a series of YouTube lectures where he explains why crystal is important and from crystal how the tensors of different forms can be taken up, right? So you understood what is a tensor. It is something related to the change of coordinates and it obeys a certain specific rules. Although this is not a rigid mathematical definition, it is a just a kind of a definition which will give you an understanding. Uh, uh, we understood also the relation between vectors and tensors, how things are related. Uh, I also explained to you uh, that uh, how these uh, x, y and z components and the ranks go up and how these can be combined into tensor. And lastly, the books. The first one would be, again I repeat, uh, uh, would be Dan Fleisch book, GEA, 
Principles of Tensor Calculus, Schaum's Outline and Manifold Tensors and Forms by Paul Rentlin. Just before I end the video, I got one point which is very, very important. If you're going to the learning of tensor, first understand what is a Christoffel symbol. When, uh, when you go through the series of learning, first understand what is a Christoffel symbol and then go into covariant definition. Most of the differentiation, most of the students, they make a mistake. They go for the first, the covariant differentiation, and then they go back to what you call the Christoffel symbol. No, it is not the right thing to do. So Christoffel symbol is important because you understand once the basis of the vector changes, uh, in case of Euclidean, there is not a problem. You just do the differentiation. But when the basis of the vector changes to some other coordinates, like spherical, etc., you need to uh, do a partial derivative of that. For that, the reason of Christopher symbol is that learn Christopher symbol. What is the use of Christopher symbol? Different notations, etc., and then go to covariant differentiation. After Christopher symbol, go to covariant differentiation, which will give you a better understanding. So that's it. I don't want to elongate the video. My earlier video, I got very good comments. Thank you from the core of my heart for the general theory of relativity video. That was basically an understanding uh, what you need to do. This is an understanding what is tensor and how you're going to learn the tensor. Go for a step-by-step -step approach. Get your basics under your sleeves. Get your basics absolutely solid. Get out of the notion that tensor is a difficult thing to do. No. If anything in mathematics has progressed, if any new methodology, any new techniques have been involved, it cannot be difficult. It is just because we don't know the indices, we don't know the way, we don't know the form. Actually, the picture and visualization is that we are not aware. That is why uh, tensor becomes difficult. It is something which is making our life easy. Instead of writing, say, for example, 2 plus 2, plus 2, we write 2 into 3. That multiplication, cross multiplication sign. Now, when for people first encounter, the, what is this? This cross, this one, all those mathematical signs. Are they difficult? No. Because instead of adding 2 plus 2 plus 2, it makes 6. We write 2 multiplied by 3 equals to 6. Same does with tensor. Tensor does those things which contracts and makes things easy. Anyway, so uh, I think you enjoyed my video. I will be waiting for your comments and uh, do like and subscribe to my channel and please click on the bell icon so that you get all the notification from Physics for Students. I'm trying to make further more videos uh, which will be interesting for this and you can visit my website and contribute the way that you want to do. Thank you very much uh, and I wish you a very nice weekend ahead. And this is Seanak signing off from uh, uh, Physics for Students. Bye and have a great day. Bye.